So this is going to be a video about installing Apple AUX version 2 on a Macintosh 2CX. This is the same 2CX I made a video about the Radius Rocket about a year ago with. Still working great, but the original 80 meg hard drive has died, so I picked up a SCSI to SD. And I figured, why not give AUX a try on this machine? It might be fun. After all, its specifications are a perfect match for a typical Unix workstation of 1988-1989. 8 megs of RAM, 6830 at 16 megahertz with FPU, and the MMU as well. And this is a 32-bit uh, dirty Mac. The ROM is not 32-bit clean, but AUX gets around that limitation. Once you boot into AUX, you could address more than the 8 megs of RAM that are on the motherboard right now. So, first things first, we need to set up our partition. So this is the installation CD, which is actually a virtual installation CD on the SCSI to SD, ID3. This is ID1. I partitioned this earlier, but I wasn't happy with the results. So we're going to redo the partitioning. For those of you who don't know what AUX is, I'd be surprised, given anyone looking at this video knows what it is. It's Apple's attempt at a standard at t Unix operating system to try and take a slice of the Unix workstation market. There's rumors that it was put out because Apple wanted to win Garmin contracts and you have to have a POSIX compatible system to win Garmin contracts at that time. So we want to partition. And this is a two gig drive. And you get all these different options. that one all right so our partitioning is done next we need to copy the Mac partition off the CD onto the Mac partition on the hard disk And we're running in a System 6 right now. I probably should have mentioned that. AUX 2.0 goes with System 6. I believe it came out in early 1990, if I'm not mistaken. And there's something I want off of this tools floppy. It's the CD-ROM hack. All right, so now we are ready to begin our AUX installation. So I have to reboot and put in the first disk of AUX setup. So AUX installation can be done over tape or CD. And both ways involve a floppy bootstrap to get the process started. So AUX floppy launch, we're going to boot into the floppy kernel. And that involves two floppy disks for the whole thing. And that will copy over the essential system files. Phase two of the installation will copy over the real root files and the entire distribution off of the CD onto the hard disk. All right, so now we need the second kernel disk. The floppy kernel. And now we're in Unix. That When that screen blinked is when the system, I do believe, handed off from the Macintosh environment to the Unix environment. AUX is special because, as you can see, it uses the Macintosh toolbox to render the graphical user interface, so it's pretty intertwined with the old system. So, you know, the finder and everything is the same, it can crash, 
but it won't bring down the whole machine. It'll just bring down all your classic Mac OS applications. Uh, Unix will keep running. All right, so. AUX release two, installation procedure. This is where it's going to ask us, you know, where are we installing from, to what drive are we installing to. Yes, we are installing from CD. I don't think Apple ever shipped an entirely floppy distribution of AUX version 2. If they did, that's just cruel. Enter the SCSI ID number of the hard disk onto which you'll be installing AUX. So in our case, that's ID 0. And our virtual CD drive on the SCSI to SD is 3. I had installed this prior on this machine, uh, but I want to redo the partitioning so I have more free space. So the drive doesn't match any of those old disks because we have you know, a 2 gig drive, so I'm going to have to do 6 generic disk entry. So now it's copying over the base file system, just the core essentials to get it booted to actually install the real system. All right, that took a little while. Now it says it's ready to be rebooted, where we'll copy the remaining AUX distribution files onto the hard disk. We have to use the read disk program to read the actual kernel from the kernel archive disk, then choose boot from the execution menu to continue with part two. So time to reboot. I just hit enter and it seems to be a little bit of a pause here. All right, so we're booted up. Let me close the CD Mac partition. Let's open up our actual Mac partition. Open the read disk application, get our kernel disk out, put the kernel disk in. Once this is done, we're going to select boot from the execute menu. And it's going to boot into AUX and then finish the system installation. We're ready. So, execute, boot. And we're now in Unix. And this is going to take a long while because it's going to copy over about 30 something megs of files off the installation CD to the hard disk. It probably does some kind of verification and some configuration too. So we'll skip around here because this will be like watching paint dry. So it's been about 25 minutes. It's still copying files to the disk, but it's closing out now, so it might be done soon. All right, the file copy procedure finally finished, so let's reboot. And next we're going to have to set up networking and just poke around at the system, see what it can do. now. So now we're going to have the login screen. There's no password on the root account by default. Back then no one was really worried about security. Now I'm just going to the desktop kernel. The first thing I'm going to do is change from black and white mode to 36 color mode.
So this is System 6 with Unix, is basically what it is. Uh, System 6 desktop environment. Oh, well, first let's change this to color mode. Now let's pick a nice desktop background. So here's the Unix file system, but being displayed in the System 6 binder. And here's our command shell for the terminal. Unix commands work just fine. So to get networking working, we have to run a thing called new config, which will build a new kernel. It will detect our assigned ethernet card the bus card. When we build the kernel, we'll be able to configure the network configuration, then get this thing online. So now we're going to configure the host name. So I'm going to name it. Um, an IP address, broadcast address, netmask, all right so now we have to reboot for our new kernel to be in use. So next, we have to uh, configure our network interface, bring it up, test it, and we'll just poke around the system, see what it has to offer. All right. There are network cards now up. Now let's set our route. We have network. Cool. Let's see if we reach out to the internet. Yep, we can. Not sure what I'll use this system for yet. It's kind of neat. So that's about it for this video. I can't think of much else to say. It's Unix on a 16 megahertz Mac. Thanks for watching.